like what? What's the actual oh, name? Oh, what's the uh, what's the Latin name? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be <-boy. Yeah. laughs> Uh, what's the source of the artwork? Okay, how was it identified? A trans man who did like, he was like talking to the people or whatever and trying to figure out where it came from or like why everybody was getting mm. ill. Well, it's like about getting white people involved in and like the kind of the beginning of epidemiology the combination of the scientific and the demographic study. Um, that they're talking about the bigger yes. Right, right, that's, that's actually the, that's good. Oh, that's you are answering the third yeah. question. Yeah. What? Oh, okay. Wait, how, so how was the source of the outcome? Oh. Right. Okay. There's, a, there's a also a picture, the second picture on the, on the Okay. Like the map, the cluster Yes, it's clustering analysis. <coughs> the clustering analysis is actually the same way when we do phylogeny, use the distance matrix. It's the same thing. It's also called clustering analysis. So uh, this is this is actually how how the clustering analysis is done. Uh, what's the person's name? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so he basically. This is basically the, the map of the neighborhood, and that's uh, the broad uh, street. All those uh, black bars are the patient cases. So, <coughs> and I mark the, the red, the red one are the pump, water pump. Those are water pump, water pump, water pump. There's also water pump here, and there are those are the patient cases. The patient case. Mm -hmm. So the pattern, what can you conclude intuitively? The people that use that Yeah. It seems to be, although you can say there are some cases here, it, it seems to be, seem to be uh, even closer to this one, but yeah. it seems to be a, uh, this one is clearly a, uh, Kind of a significant uh, 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 attract is kind of pulled into this place. So <coughs> intuitively, it seems to make sense. But the, what's significant of uh, John Snow does is actually use a statistical method to quantify this. So, so the key is what is uh, what's the like uh, we did the uh, data analysis. The key is to find a a p value for this. Is this significant or not? So, <coughs> oh, here's the answer to the question. In fact, in any liberal color, uh, the source of a brick is identified clustering pattern. What the impact of it is basically people credit this case of the starting of epidemiology. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, how how was the clustering pattern analyzed? It's basically so. What, it, it, let's say this water pump is not the source. What's the case? How do you, how do you picture? So it is the source. It, let's assume this pump is not the source. It would be less outbreaks in the area. It would be less cloud outbreaks in the area. Okay, so you wouldn't see too too many cases here. You should should be more. Evenly distributed yeah. amount of water pump. Right? Yeah. So that would be a more randomly distributed. So what you see is actually the observation. <coughs> so basically, the, the key is do you, you you have your hypothesis. You say this water pump is a source. That's your <coughs> hypothesis. That's basically your alternative hypothesis. And what you want to compare is the null hypothesis, which is which is means this water pump is not the source. So basically, you have a 
uh, your non hardware basic things, you assume all the cases will be randomly distributed in this map. And your alternative, how about in this case where your hypothesis is this water pump is the source. And you want to find a p value. Is it smaller? You want to do ex Is a smaller one supported? How about a bigger one? Yes. A smaller p value means more smaller p. Yes. Smaller p value means the random, this is the. More randomly distributed. Yes. The random one is not the, it's unlikely to be the cause of the observation. So, okay, it's again my favorite exam. What, what, how do we compare randomly spatially distributed versus non randomly spatially distributed? Do you don't like a test? Yes, uh, we use a test. Uh, uh, it's uh, <coughs> my favorite. It's very similar to test. Basically, test way is uh, so. What is a randomly distributed or non randomly distributed? <laughs> <laughs> If I if I want to oh, if I want to distribute the cards to you, what is a random, what is a non-random? Random is like you just give them. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I just let's say uh, let's say this is a block. I just uh, without even looking at, it, I just put it. <laughs> this will be a random distribution, right? So so I what is a non-random distribution? Let let's say uh, let's say this this is a water pump. <coughs> this is what I find. I just put the cards right there. Right. That's a non random. That's the source. Now, assuming each one is a patient case, that's all there. And then occasionally there are a few outside. That's a, this will be, this is a source. Right. That would be a non random distribution. Most of this will be here. But if, if, I, if, I, if it's a random, uh, basically, uh, without looking at it. That's a random distribution. I just this is the pattern will be completely different. <laughs> well, it's more <laughs> assuming you have a large one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I add also walk around, if if there's a helicopter distributing the cards, if you can fit to the helicopter to just randomly distribute the, the card in the neighborhood, then it will be much more random. How so so the, so what John Snow did is he basically well if we are if we are doing today, actually there'll be this is what they call a simulation study. You put generate a random cases and then compute uh, see how how likely your random will generate this kind of a situation. Everything is clustered around the water pump. And that value is basically the p value. But you want if it's a very small p value just know it's like, hey, yes, my hypothesis. <laughs> it's, in fact, he used it this way to convince, uh, convince. Uh, so, so, so oh, what's? Close down the yeah, basically remove the remove the mm -hmm. handle of the water pump, so nobody will use the water pump, and then the disease will be stopped. So this actually uh, the. One of the earliest example of epidemiology is also someone used a statistic to convince the officials to, <laughs> to stop the infectious disease from happening. Okay. I lost my uh, <laughs> Okay, so basically that's the uh, people cre credit. This is the start of epidemiology. The epidemiology basically is studying the occurrence, distribution, and determination of uh, health and uh, health-related disease <coughs> in a population. Uh, it doesn't have to be human population. It can also be animal. Like uh, in the lab, we actually study how rabbit, Australian rabbit, instead of human population. <coughs> so. <coughs> Worldwide infection is actually accounted for 30% of the death. Uh, that's actually doesn't include in developed uh, in developed countries. Certainly, this risk will be much lower. But in many other place, in many other countries, so that risk will be much higher in uh, developing countries. So. <coughs> but even in the U.S. 
you still see an emerging uh, infectious disease like the West Nile virus. That we did a lab uh, a few weeks ago. So West Nile virus started uh, when people from middle <laughs> and middle Middle East traveled to New York and brought that into uh, uh, North America. <coughs> so a key of the uh, epidemiology usually re requires quantitative analysis, so some mathematical model. But like John Snow did, he didn't just show a map. He actually showed it is unlikely a random distribution will actually cause that custom pattern. <coughs> Okay, <coughs> some kind of uh, 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 some key terminology in epidemic epidemiology is uh, uh, <coughs> chronic infections or acute infections. Chronic infection often means uh, uh, <coughs> something is persistent. Uh, acute infection. It's now, it's now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, I guess it's kind of a, the name say. But what implies chronic infection it means the pathogen and host are in steady state. It's in equilibrium. I guess so that's what I'm trying to hit. <laughs> this one is more like a, in equilibrium. Uh, host and pathogen. Uh, the pathogen are not being cleared out from population, and the population is not annihilated by the pathogen. So, but the acute one. If there's an acute infection, population can be annihilated by a pathogen. Or uh, if, if we all, like in, in some cases, if we all immune, like uh, 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 some kind of uh, small, uh, small pox or something, it, the disease will also be cleared out if, if it, uh, some treatment of procedure are being uh, taken. <coughs> so, I guess I kind of already said that. <laughs> yeah. So if it's acute, the pathogen are uh, often which one? The acute. Yeah, acute actually oh. often are more uh, viral. Acute acute infection often caused by more viral pathogen. Chronic uh, infection usually caused by mild mild. In fact, we will also see some uh, example later on in the lab. Uh, you will see this. In the lab exercise. <coughs> okay, here are uh, three key concepts in epidemiology uh, endemic, epidemic, and pandemic. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, endemic means it's a disease uh, constantly present in a population, pandemic means widespread, always uh, worldwide. Epidemic means it's a, all of a sudden there's a large population of people with the disease. It's kind of abstracted, but it's a uh, graphic display of those concepts. So, which one do you think is the pandemic? It's the last. Yeah, the last. Uh, which one do you think is endemic or epi endemic? Endemic would be the first person. Yeah, yeah, the first, the first one, one and epidemic. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why would you think that thing? Because it's always there. But the endemic one is constantly present, right? Why do you what? Because that one's widespread. It's like all throughout. It's... Uh, which one is... Oh, that sorry. one, the first one. Sorry. Maybe you can <laughs> Wait, you say that one? This you mean one, this one, the yeah, first one? Yeah, the first okay. one, because it's like all throughout, so that's a pandemic. Okay. What's the difference between the, first, the yellow one and the blue one? There's more clusters in um, the blue one. Like here, there it's more like spread, and then here there's clusters everywhere, so it's not as like spread out. Ah, excellent. That's actually the word I'm uh, looking for. Clustering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So the key is uh, the, this one is a random distribution. This one is non-random, more clustering. So if you if you again if you calculate the p, this will be like the if I throw the card without looking at it. This one will be like there is a source, I put the cards around it. So this will be a non-random, this will be a random. And you, if you compare the two, you can get very small p-value. So epidemic, endemic. 
I'm kind of kind of obvious when you have all covered like this. Okay, yeah. Pandemic, epidemic, pandemic. It may you may think like a clear cut in a textbook example, but <laughs> uh, let me show you some uh, real examples. Uh, if you recall the SARS uh, lab, is SARS uh, endemic, epidemic, or pandemic? It's pandemic, right? Uh, <coughs> why, why do you think SARS, SARS is pandemic? Well, well, I thought it was real So this is SARS distribution. Oh, uh, maybe not the Where is this? So maybe it's like endemic then? Yeah. Okay. SARS is a... Uh, was it endemic? 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 No. No. But didn't it affect no. people in other countries? So, so, so each line is a transmission of the disease, but each... Each, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is it each, each dog is a case. Mm -hmm. right? it, there's a case. So there's so more cases than those. So it's a... It's a... It's a... They're like... Clusters. See, that's not right. Because it didn't... Okay, so you say it's an uh, epidemic. Why you say it's called an endemic? Because it they, because there are clusters. So like just in that little section right there, there's a cluster. Um, so because it's not as spread out as endemic. Endemic okay. has clusters too, though. So how do you like how do you know? Uh, except in this case, uh, in this case actually there's a very good argument why it's not endemic because. Uh, so it's epidemic, it's epidemic. So endemic doesn't. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I guess we all agree it's not pandemic. Yeah. yeah. So it's not spread mm -hmm. all over the world. So <laughs> that's when it's wrong. The question is why it is an epidemic, not <coughs> pandemic. There are a few reasons. Uh, it's it's all those that are clustered. I mean, like, although it's spread out over you know, the globe, there are still like centralized clusters where it affects. Most, like, most oh, and then it's not random, right? Like endemic is random. Uh, endemic usually the disease already in the population right, is right. more random. <coughs> this one, this one is the disease in bats and uh, has then jumped to that's human. Right. So that's it's it wasn't in the population <coughs> to start with. So is that it's, yeah. it's an emergent disease, size. and it's also like clear fast. So <laughs> this one is a. Uh, I guess we can't create that so epidemic. It's all great. <laughs> uh, new new <coughs> disease. Uh, so okay. Okay, well yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it has to be worldwide. Uh, so I think because it went over Yeah, yeah. It has more than a few uh, continent. Yeah. <coughs> pandemic means it's a. Uh, Although technically there is a mathematical, there is a threshold definition. I forgot the WHO has a definition, so I, I don't remember exactly the word. Yeah. More than two continents or something like yeah. that. <coughs> okay, here's another example. Uh, is swine flu an endemic, epidemic, or pandemic? Pandemic. I tell you this is a tricky question. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Wait, why? So it's it's non-random. Is either epidemic or endemic? Because it's always around. Well, I don't see it's random. Because it's not. It's not because it's not like really spread out. There's still clusters out there. But it's more than it's more than two continents affected. When we when you saw the region, it affected more than one continent. And so you look at it. This was a pandemic. No, that's, no, that's endemic. endemic. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, are you, what did you say? That was just saying the reason why I thought it was pandemic was because it affected more than one continent. So you have the oh, yeah, 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 continent, yeah, you have the Asian leader. Yeah. So over here, and that's why I said people, he said it's a trick question, so it's like, okay, either pandemic or epidemic. Who say it's not, uh, it's not an endemic? It's not, it's not an endemic. It's not endemic. There's no one say it could be an endemic. Okay. Why, yeah, why you say it's an endemic? I think it might be only because 
Are we talking about um, a population of humans? Because yeah, really yes, exactly. in the yeah, population yeah. that it's affecting. Yeah. Right, but okay, so we're talking about um, <coughs> humans or because if it's naturally occurring in pigs. Right, it's also and it's always persistent in that population, so it could be endemic. Uh, that's actually very good. So in in pigs, it certainly yeah, is that's endemic. Why I right, yeah. Yeah. But uh, actually, I'm asking in human, is it also endemic? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, if you read the Wikipedia entry, the swine flu has been in human. We, we know that as early as uh, 1950s, we, there is already a case of swine flu. So it's also endemic in human. And I say it's a tricky question because I didn't say which year. According to that grant, the Is is it even even today? If you think about today, is swine flu uh, endemic, epidemic, or pandemic? Well, then it wouldn't be it's epidemic, not. right? Because it's not all at the same like exact time. It's over a course of time. But it did happen, right? It did come in like dispersed yeah. at one time. Yeah. So that's why I would say it's epidemic. Even though there was like one case in 1950 or whatever, right. it did just kind of hit everybody like within the past two years. And that's when it really started to like widespread. What well, was uh, the year? Well, here's, here's, uh, if I, here's my answer. You can you can see whether it makes sense or not. In 2009, there's a swine flu, there's an epidemic, and then it spread as a pandemic. But now, this is, I think it's most likely endemic disease because most of us have developed uh, immune response. So it, it hit every phase. Uh, this is 2009. This is to pick no, up. Like, no, epidemic, 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 epidemic. Now it's endemic. Right, right. It, it was also <laughs> endemic, and then uh, because of mutation of recombinant, uh, new this new variant then has more either more uh, virulent or more spreading, and then so it was endemic, became an epidemic, then spread, and now it goes back to endemic. That's my uh, explanation. <laughs> it, it's it, it's certainly exploratory. <laughs> topic here. So to properly answer this question, you need to know what time frame we're talking about. You need to say, well, in 2009 it was a pandemic, but it it it, it is not a pandemic now. Well, so how did it start as an epidemic then? If it was just uh, like one, because there were clusters. Yeah. That's why. Because yeah. it started as like. Because they are new. Like new certain new certain populations had it, and then, and then when it got widespread, it became a pandemic. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. The, so they three. Uh, I guess it's mo is this not a multiple choice? It's more like a essay and justification question. Um, <coughs> it also hits something about the coevolution of a pathogen and host. So in, in fact, in the lab, we're also going to. We will revisit this question. If something spread, eventually it become mild, it become endemic. And once it become endemic, <coughs> quantitatively it means a pathogen and a host has reached equilibrium. So a host are not push the pathogen away, the pathogen are not infecting more hosts. So it's in a balanced situation. So. I have a question. Yes. <coughs> And it's just a question to class. How would we? How would you group or um, how would you uh, describe HIV infection? It's endemic right now. Uh, it's kind of, in my opinion, uh, I think it's endemic because it's like constantly occurring. Like, right? No, but, but is it all? Yeah. Like you said oh, that's a good question. Uh, why? Why you say it's endemic? But I don't think it's not pandemic because it's not like the time frame doesn't. It can't be a pandemic because it's been occurring for so many years. So and then um, I don't think that it's an epidemic anymore because the, it, there aren't like just certain clusters of people yeah. that just have it's it. It's it's it is worldwide, but it's not like. Um, yeah, I think it's, it has to do with the time frame. I think it's, I think it's going to be yeah, a pandemic. Yeah, because, like, because if it was, if it was, it would have been a pandemic in, like, uh, 1980. That, in my opinion. Because, <coughs> like, you don't know anything about it, and then you don't know how it's spreading. And I think that's what, I, I feel like that's what it has, like, I don't know. 
<laughs> okay. Um, I think it's, it's an epidemic. So, well, like I said, like you said earlier, it took me some time frame. But if you do like the last thirty years, it would be like of course there's instances all over the world, but like maybe higher, like a higher concentration of like, the disease or whatever in a, a certain area. Well, I, got, oh, yeah. well <laughs> <coughs> I think it was, um, I agree, but for different, well, I don't even know if I'm agreeing with anyone, but I think it kind of would be endemic. I'm stuck in between epidemic and, well, pandemic and endemic, because, again, it is all over the world. There are large populations that have it, but at the same time, the, when you mentioned, like, the imbalance with the host, um, because of the large, um, emergence of HIV medications, mm -hmm. like it's not as, as lethal anymore, like it's not killing as many people because of the um, the medications that they have available. So although more people are, like people are being affected, it's not as, like, it's not killing off the population. Not looking at the mortality rate, but looking at the incidence rate, because yeah. like, we have the mortality rate, we have AIDS, but just incidence rate of HIV. It's actually depend on which country you are looking at. Yeah, see, yeah. that's I think that's yeah. why I chose the one I chose, because like, yeah. if you even if you're looking at the incidence rate, more people are affected in different regions. Mm -hmm. and, but that's because yes. of the like preventions that we have. But I think I'm like I don't think it's random. Like I, it's definitely I feel like it's something like a non non. <coughs> thing. I mean you can't just catch it. Right. You know what I mean? uh, In some countries, still it's still considered epidemic. In the U.S., it's I guess arguably it's endemic. endemic yeah. yeah. So, but it hasn't reached pandemic because of the treatment prevention program. Okay. Yeah. So, I guess. Again, it's a tricky question. <laughs> yeah. So, so in the textbook, I'll those say they are concept right? endemic, pandemic, epidemic. But in reality, it often they are kind of a <laughs> dependent situation, I guess. Okay. Uh, hmm, here's the question. So, why do you think? S I, I, well, I argue uh, swine flu is not endemic, but SARS. Uh, Oh, so I think swine flu is endemic, but SARS is not. Do you, do you agree? Or? What if well, yeah, SARS I, was? Because SARS I, was an epidemic. epidemic. Uh, I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, you uh, said that, because he said that, like, we built up a resistance yeah. a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think that happened for SARS. And I think with, yeah. with SARS, that's, that's, that's a good point. SARS is still lethal yeah. if you. If yeah. You, uh, yeah. So SARS is simply. Because we use isolation, people in fact with SARS either died out or killed <laughs> by. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, but swine, uh, swine flu, most of us probably have been exposed to it because it's so widespread and we have some kind of immune response to it. So that's basically my argument. Swine flu is endemic, but SARS is not. So it's uh, a. <laughs> And we actually will go back to this one again in the lab. Uh, <coughs> so this actually touched on the co-evolution of viruses and host. In general, it's <coughs> also a parasite and host co-evolution uh, in a broad sense. Although in this in this case, we're probably just looking at a virus <coughs> of bacterial pathogen, how they uh, co-evolve the host. But over long term, if if the bacteria or if the pathogen want to coexist with the host, or if the host coexists with the pathogen, uh, the host have to have a very low mortality. The, the pathogen cannot have a very high virulence, otherwise won't be in equilibrium. So that's just uh, kind of a, uh, you can actually demonstrate it theoretically by mathematical model. It's also a kind of a universal truth. If you look at every example of pathogen and host, that's a kind of a universal phenomenon. Okay, uh, a few other key vocabulary. <coughs> we kind of already touched on this. Stuff. So 
if, if a disease is endemic, that means most of the individual, most of the individual have a, we have most of the host individual have developed uh, immune response or resistance to the pathogen. So they either have no or mild symptoms. So most of us will become carriers. So that would be the <coughs> for endemic disease. Most of the individual in population are carriers. And uh, so, so the, I guess you need to know this to the difference between mortality. So <coughs> for endemic disease, the uh, the mortality of the disease must be low. The morbidity, this kind of a, uh, a gray area, if it had a, it's probably also low if the disease is uh, non, uh, as very, very mild symptom. If the, for some disease like the cold, it become a gray area. Do you think it's high morbidity? <laughs> With the common cold. That mm -hmm. have still have pretty high morbidity. Yeah, the low mortality. Yeah, but low mortality, that's definitely for sure. Because yeah. morbidity has just has to do with the occurrence of the disease, right? Right, yeah. But for common code, it's morbidity seems still pretty high. <laughs> mortality is actually is still non zero because uh, most of the elderly <laughs> patients they are still die because of common code. Mm -hmm. So the, the it's certainly a non zero uh, mortality even for common code. <coughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> reserve is another key concept in, in uh, epidemiology. Actually, we mentioned that. Uh, so, like SARS, the reserve of a SARS is bats or pets. Bats is a natural reserve of the SARS viruses. When you jump to human, human is not a natural reserve of uh, SARS viruses. <coughs> the same thing also for uh, West Nile viruses. West Nile virus, the natural reserve of West Nile virus is uh, yeah. the oh, Very good, the yeah, mosquito is that bird. The natural reserve is the bird. birds. Yeah. West Nile is uh, natural reserve of West Nile is birds. Uh, <coughs> it doesn't have to be all uh, biological reserve. Some of those are including like soil, like Bacillus anthracis, you can just live in the soil, stay in the soil for very, very long time. If it remains a small form, it's almost, uh, you, you can't even kill it by radiation. <coughs> Another key concept is called zoonosis. Uh, actually, zoonosis means usually that pathogen was in an uh, animal, but then it comes to human. It's basically an Centrical view of the of the passage. If things doesn't belong to us, we <coughs> <laughs> we give it a name of So West Nile virus again is a good example. It was in bird. Well, naturally, it occurs in birds, but then occasionally jump to human, and then it can have a detrimental effect. <coughs> we mentioned that a uh, carrier. Uh, this is actually a very good example of carry, uh, human disease carrier. It's called typhoid Mary. That's a story. Some of you have heard it. Uh, have you heard this story before? Oh. Okay, uh, it's also in your title, but you can also Google find out what typhoid Mary is. If you Google typhoid Mary, there's a very good uh, Wikipedia entry on it. But, uh, uh, <coughs> It's also in your textbook. Uh, this is actually a real story, not <coughs> this is not a 
a fake one. <laughs> so <coughs> apparently, this she's a uh, people say uh, she probably was born with the uh, the, the typhoid uh, fever. Back here, uh, typhoid fever. <coughs> I think when she uh, when she died, people uh, autopsy show they are live. Yeah, they are live uh, typhoid bacteria in her go gallbladder, and it is possible she actually was born with this since her mom uh, had that typhoid fever. The, the tragedy is the. <coughs> I tried it actually both for her and the others, and she actually worked as a cook. So, <laughs> yeah. and it, it, it's kind of a weird. And she was quarantined, clear, clear of the pathogen, and goes back to work, and then the the disease strike again. So, so finally, people uh, <laughs> say she's actually the source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, <coughs> I guess if in today we we it's quite a lot of legal challenges. Can you really put someone in isolation for so long <laughs> if you if you know some uh, someone is like a carrier of infection disease? But that's kind of a uh, the ethic uh, ethic side of the. Okay. <coughs> uh, <coughs> now, as the first thing, uh, we, we have shown a lot of examples based on different pattern of disease transmission. We can get some insight of how the disease has transmitted. So basically, that's the key uh, research area of epidemiology. Most of the people will study the pattern of geographic, uh, temporal, or demographic patterns and try to gain some insight of uh, disease transmission. Uh, <coughs> for example, this one. This is the incidence of California encephalitis in the U.S. Uh, <coughs> this is number of cases. And the peaking area is in the summertime. Uh, so, why do you think? Uh, I guess I mean you can even Google, <laughs> but the, the case is why it's seasonal. Uh, okay, yeah. So I guess we know. Some, <laughs> if you pay attention to the news, it's kind of. <laughs> Oops. Uh, Oh, I guess I didn't uh, show the answer. Yes, it's because the mosquito is a vector to transmit it in the summertime. That's most uh, the mosquito has much larger population. It's all prevalent. So, so based on the pattern, you can gain uh, some insight on how disease transmit. <coughs> Transmission of disease. There are several ways. Kind of a, uh, if you think about it. Basically, that's the, I can't even think of the third category. There's direct host to host, indirect host to host. Uh, actually, oh, there's, a, there's also a, this called a common source. So, <coughs> if you, in, in the host to host transmission, it's either direct or indirect. There's really no other way, <laughs> if you think about it. And then, the, <coughs> if it's an indirect from host to, to host, it can be mediated by a, a biological agent, those we call vector, like a mosquito, or a non-biological agent, those are called formites. But if there's no uh, host to host, we also sometimes it's also called a common source. Uh, in a cholera case, that's because of the water. <coughs> Well, actually, there's a recent uh, cholera uh, breakout in Pace uh, last year. 
also because, because of the earthquake and uh, there's no uh, clean water. So there's also a cholera in uh, Great Tampa in Haiti last year. Actually, I put that in the event, uh, figure out the, the question of the event to figure out a uh, simple and low cost method to help uh, prevent or stop the cholera breakout in Haiti. Uh, that's actually a <laughs> very interesting question. What do you think is a low cost? Can have a can be implemented implement immediately at it when 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 the color is recovered. It actually also goes back to the the first case in the London case. We just stop using the water pump in Haitian. You have to somehow figure out a way to provide clean water to the population. Okay, so again, if you look at the patterns of those uh, <coughs> disease spread, you can actually tell what is the common source epidemic, what is the host to host. Even though, let's say there's an unknown, di unknown uh, disease has outbreak, we can look at the pattern, actually can tell what is the common source epidemic and what is the host to host epidemic. Uh, basically, it's this. The red one is the, uh, sorry, I should not say, let you figure, <laughs> let you figure out. Which one do you think the common source, which one is the uh, host to host? The common source is the red one and the green one. I didn't give that away. <laughs> so, uh, okay, the red one, why do you think the red one is the common source? Um, because it comes from one spot, then everybody who drinks or eats or whatever from that spot, they'll get it all of them at the same time, or not back at the same time, but around the same time. Yeah. And if it helps the host, then one person will get it, they'll get it to another person, to another person, to another person. So okay, that's, that's a good. perfect explanation. Yeah, if you go back to the definition, the common source means everybody you will get a disease almost uh, in a very short period. But host to host, you have to spread. You have to cross some uh, a certain fraction of the population fight to occur. So that's an uh, excellent uh, explanation for this. That's a common source of a cholera breakout event. And host to host, fluid actually is a host to host. Uh, I say <laughs> it sometimes happens literally, like a, Every time my daughter had a flu, she would sneeze, and everybody in the family would got a flu. It's really a bit weird. <laughs> okay. So, there is an animation to show the different type of uh, transmission. This aerosol can be either dust or droplets traveling farther than one meter. 
Waterborne transmission is a major mode of transmission for many gastrointestinal diseases such as cholera. This usually occurs when fecal material enters the water supply. Foodborne transmission is also typical of many gastrointestinal diseases. The pathogens may enter the body in food that is improperly prepared or contaminated with fecal material. Vectors are arthropods that transmit diseases from one host to another. The term vector is most often used to describe insects or arachnids that are part of the pathogen's life cycle. For instance, the mosquito in malaria or the flea in bubonic plague. However, some insects can also passively carry pathogens with their bodies. For instance, a fly may carry typhoid or dysentery from a host species to the food of another person. Uh, there's actually a lot of detailed uh, terminology, but as long as you understand basic principle, that's okay. <coughs> okay uh, how was the HIV? Well, actually, it's not. Uh, What's the best way to stop uh, a disease? Actually, there's one strategy people try to figure out to stop HIV from spreading. It's actually related to this. Uh, actually, Dr. Lee tried <laughs> So, this is called herd immunity. So, how do we explain herd immunity? Uh, this is my favorite poker example. <laughs> okay, who wants to be the source of the <laughs> outbreak? You want to be the source? Okay. <laughs> okay, so so you have the whole stack of the let's call it pathogen or whatever. <laughs> so if you pass on to the next person, you can decide whether so so you start with on one person. You keep one card. That means you already has been exposed and infected by the, let's say it's a virus. You have the card, that means you already have the immunity. So you, you won't receive or be exposed, but you won't be infected by that again. So, so basically if I start here, I keep card. I can either choose to spread to the next two person or one person. I, okay, let's do this. If your 900 number is even, you spread to two person. If your 900 number is odd number, you spread to a single person. Right. So I, my 900 number is even, so I spread to two person. And, and then you spread to the... Well, you... you no, but you, <laughs> she's right next to you. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you keep one card. You keep one card to yourself. Uh, if they, if there is only one person, it doesn't matter which is the even number or not. So okay, we can we can stop. So we can stop here since uh, it's already half of the population is <laughs> 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 spread it. Right. So I have to come back. So let's do another example. Thank you. So, so this time, let's uh, let's. This time, uh, I'll say you already have a car, means you, are, you have immunity. You already have immunity, you also have immunity. Oh, you can, uh, you can keep, actually, it's good idea, you can keep a car, and okay. because you already have immunity. Oh, you have immunity. Right, <laughs> that's good. Uh, so this time, I, I started spreading again. I, so I still spread two of you. You have, you have, you can only give the person <laughs> who doesn't have a card. Oh, so if they have immunity, you can't give them. No. Right. Yeah. So, so how many, well, you are not directly in contact with it. Oh. Right. <laughs> so, okay, good. This is only one unfortunate individual. <laughs> I can three, sorry. You don't, you, you do that. So, so this time is much, uh, so, yeah, yeah, so the fracking is much smaller. Basically, that's the concept of the the herd immunity. Right, so if if 
well, in this case, it's zero uh, immune, herd immune <coughs> So if this person has the infection disease, it can spread to everyone. But in, if there's a, a fraction, significant fraction of population already has the immunity to this, the spread will be much smaller. So it's just like a, a poker in that poker. But isn't it true that even if you're immune, uh, in some cases, yes. Yeah. Yeah, in, in some cases, there are some cases. That's a good one. It depends on the disease. For example, if cholera is not a mix, cholera is the common source in the world. So, so it also depends on the the transmission mode of the disease. Yeah. <coughs> okay, I need to have all the cards back so I can use it next time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, we kind of already touched the co-evolution concept of this. The, over time, uh, although the, it's called parasite, this is just a broad sense of uh, parasite. Most of pathogen, if, it, if they in fact live with us, that consider as uh, parasitic pathogen. So, <coughs> so our lab will be focused. Uh, we also do a lab study the uh, the virus with the rabbit as a host. But over time, this. Over time, if the host and parasite reach equilibrium, it's almost always the, the, the pathogen will have low virulence, and the host, the mortality in the host will also go down, which is basically <coughs> what happened in the Australian rabbit case. So, <coughs> That said, uh, I'll probably let you read the Australian rabbit case, uh, then go back to that picture. So there's, a, there's also a Wikipedia entry on the, that's basically the address of it. <coughs> 